G'day elites, welcome back to the interview show where we're going to chat with some really awesome people. Today we're chatting to one of the best creators in the world. He's created with some of the best people in the world, creating some awesome effects. Uh, I can see him off camera right now, like looking confused. Like, who, who is he? About yeah, he's on? Like, I'm also Lloyd Barnes is on today. <laughs> yeah. ah, Lloyd Barnes, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. Yeah, uh, yeah, we couldn't have any of some of the good creators in today, so we thought we'd bring you in. Is that okay? Yeah, man, I'm happy to be on the bench, <laughs> you know, and step up what I need me to be there. Yeah. No, you, you've actually created some really cool effects uh, out in the market. Like, you have. You've been in the industry for years and you've created some, I like you like that. You're just too modest. You're too modest. So uh, I really appreciate it. And having said that, we actually have quite a few people coming to us on YouTube and Instagram when we said we're going to interview you to have uh, what is your creative process. So do you mind us running through you kind of, your creative process and how you think of an effect? Yeah. Uh, cool. So it, 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 it's <laughs> cold open. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, multiple processes, but uh, the, there's two main ones. One is it's if I'm given a brief, for example, like somebody says, hey, I'm working on a show and I need to do X, Y, Z. I need to, I don't know, float along the Taj Mahal River. <laughs> something and then with that in mind i work to figure out the ways to do it obviously mm -hmm. and then the other way is is, is what i'm just creating for myself but the main process i have is to essentially look at if there's anything similar out there and what other people are doing take all those methods that exist before it that i know about and throw them away mm -hmm. get rid of them completely uh, unless unless we're looking for to do something like to get the job done for a show. And they're like, look, we don't really care about having a brand new method, but we just need a practical good piece of magic that, that fits this sort of arena. I don't mean arena, like a physical arena. I mean, like the, I mean, like the, the script and things, then, then we can go for it. But what I'm trying to create new and I'm trying to get ex like exciting stuff and just sort of explore boundaries or push them, then I will take all the existing methods and sort of throw them out the window and, ex and then try to find what hasn't been done before. And there's a few different ways you can do this. It's one way is to like take existing uh, methods from other effects and use them with other plots. For example, taking a method to levitate something and using it, the method, using that method for a color change or taking a mentalism method and using that for like a, a vanish, which, which, which is completely doable. There's loads of it. And once you start, once you wrap your head around the first few concepts like that of like, taking one idea which you which you've only ever seen in, in one direction and using it in a completely different way then you really start to get this like blue ocean sort of territory which you can fairly confidently believe hasn't been done before and then you get to be very playful i really like finding out that if i do think something's original i love finding out that it hasn't that it has been done because it's another method to add to the bank of methods that that i can't go near or i don't want to go near and then it forces me to explore beyond where other people have been uh, creatively. And then you get into sort of things. And then the other side of it for me is sort of making statements with like creativity. So uh, there's a few things that I put out that have, that have been to make a point. I put out a thing called change years ago. I probably have a gimmick around here somewhere, but it was done with these playing cards where they slowly change um, visually like really really slow like a blue to a red back card slowly and it looks like it's a camera trick and it's not and that was that was i performed it i actually put videos of me performing it live to like foreign speaking people so that you know it was no like actors and shit um some people online though they caught, got a, it caused like a stir because they thought it was going to be real magic because it looked like real magic but the statement wasn't wasn't about that it was about uh everyone at the time was doing a flap card like there was like 10 color changes coming out a day and everyone was like, I've got a brand new trick. It's all this, it's all that. And every method was like a flap card or something which had been done before. And it was so, I get frustrated by seeing that. So I created that method to show, well, you can do way better shit when you, when you like go beyond it and just make a point of not using the same method that everyone else is doing. And then the same with like Cognito, everyone was putting out like these mentalism apps or not apps, but people were doing like mentalism style things. And I would think, well, really, when you break it down, it's not, it's, it's from a spectator's point of view, they don't have those sound bites in their head where they can really draw upon them 
to convince themselves further. For example, like when somebody has a, uh, a peak wallet, like the, the spectator will write something down on a piece of paper, like I conveniently have that there. And then in some peak wallets, or in general, they have to put the, either, either they pass it back to the magician or it goes in the wallet. But before that happens, they've had to write the thought down. And to me, that idea of that thought actually leaving their, bot, their mind in some way, like it was never, in some way they expressed that thought to me, it was like, that's too much. Like if they went backwards and they thought, well, how did that work then? Well, did I tell him? No. Did I, well, I wrote it down. Right. Well, I wrote it down. Well, that's the only way it could have been done. And they're right. Mm-hmm. If they, if they stop and think about it for two minutes, they will get the method. So yeah. when I come up with like Cognito, even though it's based off an old, old principle with the new methods that were put to it with like the timer so that they, and, and the, the, like Michael Murray's thing where they don't, look at uh with like the star sign where they don't even look at their own star sign uh, and then Stephen Leithwaite's cake principle edition where they don't where you don't even need to peek there was all, all suddenly they, th- this whole thing of well actually you can do a piece of mentalism where they never say anything out loud they don't even look at what they're thinking of and you don't even see the information suddenly just by like being a bit relentless with your creativity and trying to think of well look these are the points I don't want to I don't want to cover. Like I want to. I want to make sure that I'm like I'm being strict. You can actually, basically, being really stringent and relentless. You can actually create these pieces of magic which which shouldn't be possible. So that's kind of like my creative process in a nutshell. It sounds probably <laughs> scatterbrain as hell, but there it is. Mate, or is it, that going in from a cold open because you're like cold open or like kind of like banter beforehand go over the cold open you just answered all the questions that i ever wanted to ask you today so and that was yeah yeah it was your your in the nutshell covered everything so absolutely brilliant thanks so much for joining us man i really appreciate it bye Bye. yeah bye (laughs) after the pub oh happy saint patrick's day too by the way well i know happy saint patrick's day dude it'll be the first year i'm not drunk (laughs) (laughs) well yeah because i was was like to said that the wife i was like we'll go down to the pub for saint patty's day and she's out with the baby so I was like, all right, I'll call Lloyd Barnes up and say, what do you want to talk about magic? So Yeah, I'm <laughs> teetotal, so I, I wouldn't go to the pub with you. That's it, I'll just drink uh, some old water. Um, <laughs> you looked really sad for like a moment, then you went, <laughs> I just I just looked down to see if I had a beer. I don't, I've got, yeah, n- n- anyway, on to the next question, I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, At least you yes. wear a green hat. Yeah, that's it. That's where I'm living in the uh, the Irish life, living it here. Yeah, I've got a, my well, actually, I've got my hat. a Irish tattoo. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got yeah. one Irish tattoo, but... Um, that's that's for another chat. That's for our OnlyFans. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> I don't know what this <laughs> chat's going to be. Um, so thank you so much for telling us about your creative process. I'm just trying to go through my questions and see what you kind of haven't answered. Um, is this, how long have you been in Magic for? Like with your career as a magician, did you start off as a kid or did you get into it later on in life? Or uh, Like in an, well, my grandfather showed me tricks when I was five years old. Mm-hmm. Um, he was in a traveling circus, so he learned some stuff on the road, 20 years. And then he showed me bits and pieces. And it wasn't like standard magic tricks. He showed me some really cool stuff. Um, and then got into like sports and things. But I was always doing magic. Like I did magic for like a talent show in primary school. And then it was like a show and tell day in comprehensive school, which is like high school. Did magic there. It was always dipping in and out. Um, and then uh, got, to, got to like 16 years old, got an injury in sport uh or stop me doing sport and for that whole summer where i normally would have been out doing stuff i was like sort of housebound so i had some money like 90 pound i think i had and i remember it because i spent every penny on magic tricks and i started playing with stuff and i remember there was a website called the magic video depot and i had come up with a trick meth i come up with a, a method for something and i put it on there and someone wanted to buy the rights to it from me and they basically sent me some encouraging words. Like, oh, I've been in magic for like 40 plus years and, I'm, and I've never seen the method done this way. For a 16-year-old, you should be proud of yourself and maybe consider doing this full-time. And I was like a 16-year-old, but I was very fresh to it as well. Um, like I, I only just sort of really picked it up a bit. And I, obviously like, I was obsessed with magic all, all the time, but like I hadn't really, like I would record the David Blaine specials, the Paul Zenon shows. I would have them all on VHS, watch them over and over, but I really didn't have like, I was, I was from a poor family. So when I had that summer, when I bought my magic, it was the first time I had 
my own bicycle deck, for example. I'd found remnants of pieces of bicycle deck that I'd had and put together for years. And I didn't have any proper real props or anything, you know? So that summer when I started, that was like the start for me. And then, um, and then I went to university, tried to do like a normal human type thing. <laughs> and it was ridiculous. And I remember I had like a small job in uh, an arena, uh, in the Cardiff International Arena, and I read a book, which is a bit of a, like a, a stereotypical book sort of thing. It's called The Alchemist. And I read that by Paolo Coelho. And it was all about basically like following your dreams and stuff. And I remember thinking like, fuck this, man. I'm, I'm going to go and do that. So I went, I, I went off backpacking to India and came back. I was like, I'm going to do magic full time. <laughs> and I basically went from there. And it was and then I started my own business called Enigma. And we made like these moonshine playing cards and uh, we were really fortunate that we broke like it was at the time it was like everyone had their own magic company and we were really fortunate that we rose to the top really quickly and we actually became like a proper business turning a profit and not long after that i was offered a job at uh at another magic company and and at the time it was a tough decision whether to take the job or stay at the, co- at the company i was running but i was doing so much work that i wasn't sleeping at night and the job of the other company allowed me to be much more free creatively whilst pursuing the same creative mm-hmm. career. And then they went from there and I was getting like consulting gigs on TV and like, like, um, but, you know, long story cut short, I'm here now. Uh, and that's like the brief. Right <laughs> I love it. Every question, every answer you give is in a nutshell. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's in 10 depth. hours long. Yeah, it's 10 hours yeah, long. I think it's a few key moments, but basically five years old, always loved magic, never not loved it. Like, you know, some people quit and they go, I'm done with magic, I'm sick of it. Mm. Like, even when I like quit that company I was working at and I did a bit of photography on the side just to like keep me going and like mentally like mm. thing. I, I was never, some people are out of magic and then they come back in and they go, wow. Yeah, yeah. I love the in-depth thing. I love you telling us how it ran because a lot of times you do get people that say, can you tell us you like, history of magic and I'm like oh yeah it's uh got into it as a kid and I'm, now i'm here You're like cool <laughs> sorry Thanks. from the bottom no, <laughs> yeah no, no. and then you, you, yeah, you have an interview that's, 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 basically it, no i love it thank you so much because th- there's things in there that i didn't even know about you so i just learned a lot from you just saying that so i appreciate that and you're talking about so your creative process and where you started magic and there's been a lot of tricks that you've been talking about where you've created some cool things now there is some other questions which will be insert question here on screen uh, some things about coming out, maybe about an index. Can mm, you talk yeah. a little bit about that at all? Like sneaky. I can things? talk about that. Um, and that's it. Moving on to the next question. <laughs> so, well, so, I mean, I can quite openly talk about it, I think, because we haven't been too shy about it. The mm. main thing, the main reason I don't, we haven't been able to talk much more about it is that, uh, and this is the beauty of uh, being at Murphy's is that, there's no rush on mm. on anything because we want to we're, we're constantly trying to do things like to make sure that absolutely perfect like i've been here for like what, 18 months or something mm. and i've had cognito out mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah and so what it is with this index is that we, we, we were gonna have it like finished and produced and in the warehouse ready to ship back in like november uh but at the last minute we made some updates and like, even after we'd like put the money forward for the molds and everything to be done, like we've actually, we've actually already have paid for the full production. We were still making tweaks and having like, well, Javier had this, like this one spark, not one, we had lots of, yeah, this one moment of like sheer brilliance, which just completely revolutionized the, 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 the already brilliant design that we had. And I can say that because it's, it's Javier's modeling, that, that so it's not my I, i'm not saying mm-hmm. i'm brilliant it's javier's design work that he did because he's a fantastic 3d sculptor people don't know this um and so he but he had this one like literally after we were going to go production he had this one idea which which i thought you know what this is actually worth stalling the project for and 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 making it this way because it does completely flip it on its head but in a nutshell and I, the, thing, the thing the reason people know more about it than they should or are more eager for it than so we wouldn't tease it so early, but I give early copies to some people like Christine mm-hmm. Grace and Craig Petty, and they use it in their videos and, and people have seen their videos and they can see just how damn quick it is and how lightning fast. So in a nutshell, it's <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> a brief overview is that I love full card indexes. I love mm-hmm. playing card index. 
indexes. I, I have so many, I've used so many. I've got versions which are folded card indexes. I've got um, things like the Advocate and I've used like, I've used the, the Cosmo ones where it's the, it's the, like the four palleted sheets of yeah. every four. Like, it's so many different versions and each of them have brilliance to them mm-hmm. and, each, and all of them have flaws to them. And what I wanted was an all encompassing index that would fit me because I am a EDC style performer. I, I, when I perform magic, I don't have a, I don't bring a case. I don't wear a coat. I don't have a jacket like with in, mm-hmm. inside pockets. I wear regular to skinny fit jeans and nine times out of 10, I'm in a t-shirt and at best I'm in a hoodie or mm-hmm. like a, just a crappy little like like jacket that I'll take off as soon as I get in somewhere. So I dress like an average person Mm -hmm. and I needed a full playing card index that would give me access to all 52 cards that could sit in a pair of skinny jeans pockets. But the the number one thing was that it had to be lightning quick Mm -hmm. because where other ones, um, they're not like they take on average uh, for somebody who's well versed in using some of those ones between 20 to 45 seconds mm-hmm. because you have to count through them and there's a lot of like you have to think quite a lot when you're doing mm-hmm. it um or you've got to take up a lot of space right yep. so with our index called dex uh, uh it's a full playing card index that sits in your pocket and it looks just like you've got if I'm probably in the trailer, I'm probably going to do this to, to mm-hmm. highlight the point, yep. but without revealing it, if I put what I'm going to do in the trailer is put a, po- a wallet in my pocket and you can see this is like a super yeah, yeah. normal wallet. Yeah. I'm going to put the decks in my pocket and people are going to try and guess which one's the decks and which one's the wallet. And, 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 nice. and I'll, reveal, I'll, I'll expose it all on camera in the trailer. Mm-hmm. You won't be able to tell the difference. That's how thin yeah. it is. Um, so it's, first of all, it's super thin, but the main point to this is, is that you can get a, a card, any card named and retrieved on average in three seconds. Jeez. So it takes it down, it takes it down from an average time of a, if a, for like a fast card in, in a normal index, apart from like the, the top and bottom ones, like an mm-hmm. ace and a king. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a fast card can take about 20 seconds sometimes to somebody who's well versed, up to like 45. Because I know that some of them you have to count twice just to make sure you got it right and things. But this on average. Uh, the average card retrieval is three seconds. Jeez, and man. then if you've got a really tricky one, because, you know, not every index is perfect, because some cards mm. in the index are, and I say really, tr- when I say really tricky, I mean it takes five seconds. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So to put that in the context, on, the av- on an average card, you would name, like, the f- four diamonds. And already... You've got it. I've copied it out. Yeah. And that's what that's if if uh, like yeah it's it's very hard to to dis, to describe on without without seeing it but um, that's that's the essential view so it's a full playing card index which we think we think is the fastest full playing card index oh, ever yeah. created it fits in your pants one jeans pocket it's not two or three or four it's just your normal jeans pocket well yeah you showed me just before we got on the chat because we were catching up about it and it looks like a wallet when you had it in there and you had your phone in the other pocket, it is identical to what a wallet would look like. And the fact that you can get in and out in less than five seconds. Thinner than a card box. Yeah. Insane. Which is insane to think that like, that's how compact it is. And that doesn't obviously doesn't, uh, obviously you make it more compact than what a a tuck case is. Right. You're going to think the cards will be more compressed and maybe a bit harder to get in and out of, but it's obviously not. It's even easier the way you're with the way this whole index is designed to get in and out yeah. real quick it's insane the whole mechanics behind it I, I'm, I'm trying not to give away much as well <laughs> but it's, it's exciting so uh yeah I, I, I mean i don't get excited very often about like whatever i mean it's you know like some things you're excited you're excited for you to use mm-hmm. like it's something for me because I, I that's all i've ever wanted is like a like i you know not not it's not perfect nothing's perfect yeah nothing i've ever created is perfect and it never will be but you know, it's perfect for me. Except your child. But it's, huh? Except your child. He's perfect. Except my child. <laughs> <He's your last>. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but it, but I'm excited for other people to get it. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Like that's what I know. Like I think it's, it's the, the thing about it is it's not excited about selling it. Mm-hmm. I'm like I, I can't wait for people to start using this thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. And because I think it's going to open up so many exciting possibilities for people to perform confidently with an index. And then the other day we had um, a breakthrough, which now means that it's also a full folded playing card index at the same time. Oy. Which normally folded playing card indexes are like four times the size and you need yeah. to have loads of space. But with this, with, with Dex, you can do full mercury folded it's a full mercury folded card index in the same pocket space which which it was like when, oh. when we had when we had this idea it was like holy shit i so, kind of want yeah, to cut i kind of want to cut the uh, the interview here so you can you can show me and you're like and that's it in a nutshell <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of the interview yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well so this is exciting but this isn't the type of thing that because there was also something that was uh getting uh, not hyped, but some sneak peeks of something awesome coming out that people might have seen a photo up on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram popping up without a file follow this kind of code. Um, that's not what you were teasing just then, right? You weren't teasing to the index, you're teasing to something else. Can you talk yeah. about that at all? Or is that just still people need to kind of go back, find that photo and follow their, uh, put their Sherlock Holmes goggles on? It's super tough to talk about that. So <laughs> that's it. Just tell them to go to follow that code, I think. Right. Well, that would come up on screen. All right. It's <laughs> so, <laughs> so hard. To talk about. I know what I can and can't say because of. Yeah. Right. So every, 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 I think, you know, they say everyone's got a good book inside them. Mm-hmm. Everyone's got one good book. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think every magician has got one good trick. Yeah. And uh, so this is like, this is my life's creation i think mm-hmm. if, I, if when i this thing when i if you know, whatever i die um i think this will be the thing that like when everyone goes lloyd barnes like that will be yeah be like oh, the creator of this um mm-hmm. it's it, you know we <laughs> magi- the biggest magicians on tv want it yeah. talking about it mm-hmm. trying to buy the rights uh it's com- I can't think of which. Yeah, yeah no, I know. I can see you kind of struggling not to say too much, but that enough in I itself. Don't really I think anything away, I, but I'm just so so proud. No, of I, it I, yeah, I don't think that itself is enough to say how exciting this is. I sound like such an egotistical, arrogant dick when I say this, but like, mm. there's not one person, magician or layman, that I've showed this to that it just hasn't. Oh yeah, absolutely melted them away. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that the proof's in the pudding. Like, like I said, the Blackpool and people's reactions were just stunned. Yeah, we got, like, TV like, magicians. Everyone that's seen it at Blackpool yeah. just lose yeah. their mind. Yeah. Um, there, there's been tricks like, you know, magicians are renowned for wanting to know or wanting to let people know that they know what the method is, right? So having people watching magicians' reactions been absolutely floored by this was like a cool feeling. So hats off to you for creating that. Like it's, it's, it's insane. Say it's, a, it's an everyday carry. Yeah. Uh, and and it can do as m- eh, it's not much it can't do. Yes, yeah. I was literally trying to think of something that it couldn't do. Is, is it? Uh, yeah, it's not not a lot. It can't do. It can yeah. do a lot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Next question. I literally maybe you cut the whole thing. I feel so arrogant I talking no, no. to myself like that. I just re- I am really proud of it, and, and it is it is the best thing I've ever created, and probably ever will create. Um, no. You should be proud of it. You should. Like, you should be. Are... You should be proud of it. If when you see when whoever's watching this, when you see the, the trailer come out for this effect, go hit up those magicians that are in the trailer because they will they'll back on this. Like this is an awesome effect. So you, you you're modest. We we started this thing off by me saying there's an awesome creator coming on creating some awesome effects, and you were so modest, like not me, not me. And the fact that you're proud of this. It stands like this is awesome. So you yeah, should be awesome. proud of this, mate. You should be. Well, I mean, like you want to ask the magician in the trailer. It's going to show what it is exactly. Yeah. I think. Yeah. It, you know, it is that, and I think I, it's one of those things you go, "Oh fuck, I need it. I mm. just need it now. I need yeah. it right now." Yeah. All right. So thanks for uh, joining us and having a uh, chat. If you guys haven't, if you're just tuning in, we're chatting with Lloyd Barnes um, about all things Lloyd and sexy Lloyd and creative Lloyd. Um, <laughs> nope. No, no sexy Lloyd. <laughs> All right. Um, which, which is actually you where I was going gonna... to... You go together like brushing your teeth with orange juice and aluminum. Mm. Bon appetit, boys. Bon appetit. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, because that's what I was going to say. I was going to say ask about your your OnlyFans, but if that's off the cards, then can you tell me like you're getting more active in your YouTube? Nice segue. My only fan. <laughs> My only fan. It's just me. Um, <laughs> getting into your YouTube, you're a bit more active on that now. What's the aim and goal for there? Like, I get a lot of people why they get on YouTube, but um, oh, you get more well, creative and you you create more effects and stuff. Can you tell me? <laughs> What you yeah, no, so it. I've always wanted to do it. Uh, I've always wanted, so my, my hobby is magic and videos. Mm-hmm. Always has been. Before doing magic as a business, uh, and it'll always be magic and videos. Like I, I used to make, I got videos of me, old school VHS tapes of me filming magic tricks when I was like six and seven years old and editing them and th- things. Like I've always, always filmed magic and it's a hobby. And then when I got into like the industry side of it, Everything I'd, I'd done, pretty much aside from like performing for friends and family, um, was it was it's been business related. Like like you know, a lot of magicians when they get when they start performing, they they turn it into gigs and they start getting paid for it. And suddenly, everything they do becomes the business side of it. So when they practice, because they're practicing for the next gig or they're practicing for the next thing, and we find like as magicians, especially people, the ones who pay their bills with magic, you don't often have a hobby. Mm-hmm. you sort of lose your hobby side of it um and for years when i've been at other companies i I just wanted a creative outlet where i have downtime like my hot when i'm not doing magic for to pay the bills like when i'm not creating products and, and, and whatever consulting and things in my downtime i create magic magic videos and for a long time i couldn't put those videos where i wanted to put them uh, on like on youtube mm-hmm. and now i i've got all this like the freedom where I have a really perfect work-life balance of I get to do everything I do with us at Murphy's and then in my free time I I found my hobby again which is creating magic and making videos out of it and I've always loved doing it I've loved share I've always shared my magic with an online community whether it was through the magic video depot going back 15 16 17 years ago uh I like I would shared it for my hobby back then and it's my hobby again now. So I'm not going to be a big YouTuber. I have no intention of that. I don't want to get like millions of subscribers. I'm not going to be able to make a little, I, 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 I have my job, Yeah. but it's really nice to have a hobby side of it. And I find that by giving myself sort of like the freedom to do YouTube like this, I'm more creative and it's leading to better, better products and ideas that way mm-hmm. as a byproduct of the creative freedom yeah. so it's i've started my youtube i suddenly started to like I, I say blow up not like millions of followers but uh like i'm getting loads and loads loads of subscribe it, it sort of seems like it's working and the reason it's working is because i'm not doing it to like monetize it i'm yes. not doing it yeah i'm not doing it to pay my bills i'm not doing it because i want to be successful mm-hmm. on youtube it's because there's no goal there mm-hmm. is no goal with it. It's just my hobby. And because yeah. of that, it's the right reason, I think. And people are just, and that's why people are just like subscribing and getting involved and helping me blow it up. So if there was no viewers, the content would be exactly the same. It yeah, wouldn't yeah. change a single bit and it would still be the same thing. So I'm very fortunate that I'm getting a lot of people. And I'm doing, uh, I'm teaching tutorials on there of, of my material, oh, yeah. only my material, obviously, um, because. Uh, I know there's a whole discussion on like YouTube exposure and things. The problem is a YouTube exposure is not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. It's not going anywhere. You can't, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. You can't put the feather back in the pillowcase. You know what I mean? So like there's a video with Justin Miller, Chris Ramsey and Xavier Spade having a discussion and you know, the, the best way to combat it really is to, is to teach good magic on there to, mm-hmm. to, to get away from the people who are just teaching methods and teaching them badly. And the other thing is like my magic's taught by other people on there anyway. Yeah. So I'm able to teach it myself. Yeah. No, I, I teach it the right way. Yeah. I always, um, <clears throat> I was having this conversation with, I think it was Xavier Spade, Pendreva Ramsey and all those guys a, a while ago. And yeah. I was, I asked them why. And they said, Every, people are going to learn from YouTube no matter what. Why not learn from someone that knows what they're talking about and someone that you can actually teach in the right way? Because I know when I first got into magic years and years and years ago, I didn't live close to a magic shop. I lived like five hours away from a magic shop and I'd go to YouTube to lie and learn a simple magic trick and I would learn the wrong way. And that was kind of bad habits that I picked up because I was learning from someone that didn't really know magic or, you know, it was, 
it was very, very basic back then. I was learning the wrong methods and the wrong routines and stuff. And it was good yeah. to finally. Oh, do you know, I haven't met a single person under the age of like 20 mm-hmm. that may, may, maybe even uh, older that, that didn't see their first, mm-hmm. get their first real like fight out of learning magic from YouTube yeah. these days. I really haven't. Yeah. And to think of them learning it from the wrong ones is, 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 is sucks. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's not, it's not a good thought. So it's not going away. It can't be, it can't be avoided, unfortunately. And people yeah. can kick it off as much as they want, but that's what it is. And with my stuff being taught on there, anyway, I'd rather people just learn it from me. You know what I mean, man? Which is really fun to watch. So like, I'm not putting up videos and be like, Oh, learn how this Darren Brown trick is done. Or how did that yeah. dynamo walk on the Thames? Like <laughs> that's not my bag. Like you ain't going to learn that from me. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm teaching it to people who are interested in magic already. Mm-hmm. And that's the big distinction, I think, between a lot of exposure on YouTube. And I think mm-hmm. some people argue about exposure on YouTube and don't understand the difference in categories. So they're yes. all encompassing. Yes. And they go, oh, exposure's bad. And yeah. Tell it if I, if, if Copperfield come up with a news day TV special of Blaine and somebody made a video exposing all those secrets saying, this is how Blaine put a coat hanger down his throat and pulled out a ring. Mm-hmm. Like that's... That is shit, shitty yeah. behavior. Yeah, yeah. It's- but to expose your own tricks and teach your own tricks the right way as opposed to other people teaching them, and it's targeted to magicians, mm-hmm. and you are actively going out of your way to not even let laymen see the links that you share, which I do. I really mm-hmm. make a really strong point of doing that. And that that's not good for me because I would get le- I get less views for that. Yeah. But I don't yeah, yeah. because it's a hobby. I only want... I'm just doing this for magicians and because I enjoy it. I think with those sort of like ethical points put in place then it's, mm-hmm. it's completely fine well thanks so much man i appreciate that we'll, we'll put a link in the description below where you can uh, go watch all of your videos right now <laughs> yeah. i love it when they do that they're like <laughs> yeah this is me hacking the mainframe <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll put a link in the description below where you can go check out lloyd's channel and some of these videos it'll be a load of fun but I think I've taken up too much of your, your time already. I'm just looking at the time. I have taken up way too much of your precious time. So I appreciate you coming and chatting. Thank you. I think, well, thank you for having me on the show, dude. No, thanks so much. I'll uh, come and hang out on one of your videos as well. So, you know. Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. Count me. Count Five me. o'clock. Sunday session live. Count me in. I'll be there. I'll be there. Maybe I'll count. be there on another time. We should tell people about that website, you know. Oh, yeah. No, that that's that will come up on the a photo will come up on the screen. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I'll, I'll have it come up again. We're still recording. So the photo's still going to be up. It's going to be up this whole time. We're not going to be able to I see mean, each other. I mean, they have to do a bit of work to find it, but if they put the work in, they'll get some clues to see what we're talking about. Yes. The thing that we can't talk about that you're most excited about, people will get hints and tips on where to go because it is, it's, it's a rabbit hole. And don't just go there and think you're, you're there. Have a look around because there's things hidden when you get there that'll give you hints to something else. Jeez, I'm trying to, there's a lot. It's a lot going on and it's great. That's, that's, that's. my first is in canoe but not in potato you need a long lie down <laughs> <laughs> um, alright well thanks so much for joining us Lloyd uh, I'll let you back to it have a great day and I will see you Sunday my friend okay and I'll just chat to you after this interview anyway because we work together so oh yeah, we, yeah we're going to talk work talk so alright I'll stop recording I'm not going to stop recording Guys, gonna know all the secrets. Yeah, I've stopped recording. <laughs> all right, bye, bye, everyone. Thanks so much. <laughs>